there is much to learn. Hello and uh, welcome everyone to this last lecture, uh, this time about game writing. Um, I am Tib, uh, also called Ayla, in that other life that somebody said was the real one. <laughs> so uh, today we are talking about concise writing. Um, it is quite a simple concept, but I think it's really important for any writer, um, especially one who wants to become a professional one. Um, and also, if you want to write for Beyond Skyrim, uh, we have strict word limits. So, uh, concise writing is really quite important um, in this case. Um, and also, since I read a lot of student assignments, um, I see a lot of people, well, not failing, but let's say that you could do better. <laughs> so yeah, this is the reason to talk about this. Mm. Okay, so I was thinking about having an outline like this. Um, Basically, I will talk about two things. Firstly, uh, the precise language. Uh, how to reduce the count of everything vague. Um, and secondly, a concept that I really like is word economy. <laughs> uh, treating the words as a resource that you do not have a lot of. So, uh, yeah, and maybe a few other things as well. Um, so I was thinking of just saying a few words about myself. I mean, let's hope I have enough time here for everything, but yeah. Um, my latest writing project uh, has actually been uh, trying to learn C Sharp. <laughs> so not so much um, traditional writing. Um, and this is because I'm learning Unity. Uh, trying to prepare for my first game jam, uh, which is next week, <laughs> and this is going to be quite exciting. Um, I also try to take a picture of myself, but um, it's a bit difficult because I <laughs> mostly I am behind the camera nowadays um, because I have a family. So yeah, it's mostly just me taking pictures. <laughs> Okay, uh, so first of all, writing itself can be pretty hard. Um, and I just put two quotes here uh, from, uh, from two poets. And I think they are, um, they are really nice ones. I mean, the first one is like really short and the second one is like a wall of text a little bit, but um, Basically, my point is that um, nobody thinks that writing is easy. So um, knowing how to do this and knowing some techniques uh, can really help you. And I actually think that it can like boost your confidence. Um, the more you know, the easier it might become. And also, um, this second quote is by Mark Doty. And I just want to say that um, he is a very good um, poet, but also a teacher uh, with a lot of experience. So in case you are searching for like some kind of motivation or whatever, uh, feel free to, um, to Google him. And uh, if you want to check out his books, um, he's, a, he's a really good one. So yeah. Mm. And here is another book that I would recommend for uh, any writer, really. Uh, it's called Steering the Craft. And uh, it's, uh, it's a really informative book, a little bit different from your standard textbook. Um, and I would especially like to say that you notice the word steering because essentially, this is all about having control of what you do. Um, so yeah, this is another book that I would say that if you have time, 
uh, check this out. <clears throat> so the first, okay, so first of all, like, can you really hear me? Because everything is, everyone is really quiet. <laughs> so I'm like, am I talking to myself? Yeah, you're good. You're yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> I will just keep going. Um, because we will have an exercise coming soon, so I just want to have enough time for it. So yeah. <laughs> so first, uh, we have their precise language. And I thought that I would just give an example, uh, because I think maybe it's, you know, the easiest. So what is this? Um, your fellow student has just submitted her first NPC. And uh, so I think my point here is that the first example, uh, that would be um, quite bad language, quite vague. We don't, we don't really learn anything. Um, whereas in the second example, you can see the precise language, um, the way it's meant to be written. Um, so like in the first example, like they don't really say anything. It's just fluff. It's just empty words. Uh, we almost do not learn a single fact. And the one that we learn, it's not interesting, it's not relevant. And if I was a teacher, which I happen to be, uh, then I would, uh, yeah, not be very happy <laughs> with this one. Um, so I try to make like, um, uh, I try to give like a teacher feedback to myself. <laughs> Let's just try to like point out a couple of things that are wrong. And this is an extreme example, but this is also just to really make you aware of it. Uh, because, and you know, just to be honest, I have, I have read assignments that are maybe not so far off from this. <clears throat> mm. Okay, so since the most important part of my lecture is the exercise, I think we can actually just uh, go ahead with that because it's on the uh, next slide. And so basically what I want you to do is to try and create a reverse precise language, one that is really bad. I have given you a prompt. <laughs> which I hope you like. Um, and um, so if you can write a few dialogue lines, it doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be finished. Just do as much as you can and try to include as much as possible of those following words. Uh, it doesn't have to be everything. Just try to put in, well, everything you can. Um, and the point here is that uh, hopefully it will like help you become more aware of uh, when is the language vague. And I was thinking of having like, I don't know if 10 or 15 minutes. I almost need a bit of advice with that. Um, maybe 15 could be enough. Why don't we start with 10, um, just so that you have enough time to get through the rest of your presentation, because I know there's a lot coming that's really cool. Yeah, that's true. So, OK, I hope that 10 minutes is enough. And again, you don't have to, like, finish everything. This is just for, you know, just to test it, just to see if it makes sense for you. And use the prompt if you want. Um, it's there to help you. <laughs> Um, but you don't have to use it. You can make uh, you can make up your own prompt if you want to. So let's say that the, if the time starts now, um, I will try to check back in ten minutes and see how we are doing. Okay. So hopefully, um, hopefully this exercise was useful somehow. And basically, my point is ju uh, just that um, we should try to avoid all of this that I told you to to include in the text. Um, 
and instead we should try to use the the facts, uh, the direct statements, the active voice, and uh, this is what we will also be talking about um, when we talk about world economy. And this is a term that I borrowed from this book. I hope you can see the title. The picture is a little bit blurry. Um, it's called Wonder Book. It's written by Jeff Vandermeer. Um, again, uh, this was like massively inspirational for me. Uh, so if you feel so, check this out. Um, it was also included in one of my uh, writing uh, courses that I took at the university. So um, yeah, uh, so world economy is also quite a simple concept. And basically it just means that um, the words are scarce, use as few as possible and make them work as much as possible. Um, and I think the most important thing here is that um, it might take some practice and it also needs you to really have a plan for what you are writing. Mm. And now I will try to give you some examples. Um, the examples are not from Skyrim, they actually come from uh, ESO. And this is because I have been done a lot of, a lot of work uh, on the um, uh, USB uh, wiki site, uh, so I know like a lot of good dialogue, but I think it's still relevant. So let's take the first one. Um, this is a, a, a keeper of the Hall of Dead, quite a lonely person, and he has this um, dialogue uh, after you have completed uh, the quest for Windhelm, the main objective. And I really like it because um, even though, you know, he's, he is obviously like a, a grumpy loner, um, the language is actually like really precise here. I mean, uh, he mentions uh, what the player did, and this is really important. Um, but he also shows like his own attitude, like he doesn't really care. Um, and also, he shows um, his own traits, that he's a loner, he doesn't really want to talk, he wants to be left alone. And he also mentions where he's working, or at least he's like giving hints that he's working yeah, with the dead people. So, um, I think this is a really nice example of uh, uh, concise language. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I have another example. Um, this is also, <laughs> I mean, I like humor, uh, so uh, obviously. <laughs> um, but you know, apart from that, uh, this is a surprisingly good example uh, when we think about that this comes from uh, uh, a drunk NPC who is really supposed to be quite silly. Um, so within those few lines, like there are barely four lines, he is in his character and he actually uses precise language. He uses active voice and direct statements. Uh, and this is really cool. Uh, and we also learn three things, that he's drunk, that he maybe drank a little bit too much and also that he's in a talkative mood. And this is really well done for an NPC who is just like a filler NPC. He doesn't really have any other purpose uh, than to just be there, you know? This is like his only dialogue. So this is really well done. Um, and of course, I personally think uh, both those examples were also like a bit funny. Uh, humor is something that I appreciate a lot um, in writing, and I think I'm not the only one. Um, okay, um, and this is a little bit like an extreme example uh, about word economy, that sometimes 
you maybe do not really have to write at all. And I decided to include this because, <laughs> I mean, as a student here, of course, you will be writing, like you will not be submitting like letters with symbols. But I just think that this is like a really good example of like an ultimate, I don't know, conciseness, if you can say so. Um, and also what is interesting here is that, you know, um, you have this image of the Dark Brotherhood. Um, uh, I think the previous writers, they probably worked really hard. We have a lot of quests, a lot of lore, a lot of NPCs, the faction members. So all of this is like serving um, um, and creating this image of the Dark Brotherhood. So that right now, you know, if you just look at the symbol, you know what it means. You don't really have to say anything. Um, so yeah, I also think it's maybe something to think about sometimes. How much do we really have to write? <clears throat> um, and a few ways to practice the word economy. Uh, well, the most obvious one. Um, if you take your first exercise and uh, just remove everything that I told you to include and also try to like um, maybe add as many facts as you can. Um, and secondly, uh, we have some um, um, recorded lectures, among them uh, the Barkathon. <laughs> Uh, and this is this is really good because NPC greetings, they are all about concise language. Um, so I would recommend that you watch it uh, if you already haven't. And this will also be really useful for you if you want to write for Beyond Skyrim or if you do your assignments. Uh, and um, the next one is more like a general advice, like you can do it with anything. Just to try to cut as much as possible, but you have to still keep all the information. So this is like the challenge there. Um, and one of the examples how you can do this is by writing flash fiction. I have done it myself. I thought it was like, it's ex a really great exercise. Um, I think I learned a lot by doing this. Some of the more extreme writers like to write six word stories. I think this is like a little bit too much um, or too little. Like um, I personally feel it's really hard, but if you want to try, why not? Um, and lastly, uh, poetry. Uh, also something that I'm trying to like to do more myself. Um, this, um, I would say it helps a lot, um, like making good descriptions, finding the right words. Um, poetry is really great as exercise. Um, okay. Mm. I also try to come up with some sort of formula for concise writing. Like how, I mean, how to do this, like how to succeed. And I think it is mostly about um, control. That you control what you write. You try to use the precise language. And you try to be mindful of the word economy. Like um, do not use um, unnecessary words. Uh, try to keep it as short as possible and to the point. And if you like, constantly try to control and edit and rewrite. I think at the end you will um, you will manage to write really nice, uh, concise text. And also, this is like something that I think I myself. I would say that when I started studying or taking my uh, writing classes. I was really like writing uh, super long sentences, uh, purple prose, 
if you know what this is. Um, it's like long descriptions that nobody wants to read. Uh, but as I practiced, I was like, um, I started writing shorter and shorter text. It was like more to the point and I actually enjoyed it much more. And I also got like really nice feedback from other people. So it was also great. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about practice. Um, the more you do, um, the better you become. Mm. Yeah, just reading the chat right now. Yeah, I agree. First drafts, of, of course, they, yeah, um, they are often bad. Mm. Mm. And also, yeah, I agree with um, Thales. Um, screenwriting is really relevant and really important uh, for game writing, like if you want to write for games. But I think this, we should all, almost do like some other lecture about this because it has like um, a bit more specific stuff related to this. Um, so yeah, it's something that I have been thinking about, <laughs> but not today. Um, okay, so basically uh, this was it. Um, my lecture was supposed to be like really short, just trying to introduce the concise language and what you should be think thinking about. Um, so I didn't really have so much more to say. Um, I hope you keep practicing and writing those assignments. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know uh, if you have any questions, you are welcome to ask. We have quite some time. Could we try fixing ours? Like, and then submitting it? The the ones that we screwed up by, you know, including all of the things. Could we post some of those? Are people already posting those? Yeah, I think we can do it. You mean like taking the first exercise and trying to just trying to make it not horrifically bad, yes. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> you know, at first I had actually included it as a second exercise, but then I was like, hmm, I will probably not have time for this. So um, we can absolutely do it. Uh, <laughs> um, There are so many. <laughs> no, but really, it's. I, I think it's a hard question. Um, mm, you know, since I since I edit a lot, I kind of have like an editor's mindset. So this is quite a hard question for me um, because I I see all the small mistakes and sometimes I maybe even see like too much. Ah, uh, the most common mistakes. I think other teachers are welcome to. Kind of help me out here. I don't really know what is the most common one. Oh, God. I would say the most common one is to have the dialogue to be too branchy or have them go too deeply into the tree, so to speak. So you don't have things like, so a, a good dialogue tree is, uh, goes to like, I don't know, one, two, one, 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 may, maybe, or even one deeper. But I see like multiple, um, Dialogues often yeah. they have they, they go like one point one point one point one point one point one point one, and they're yeah. all the way on the rightmost side. Yeah, lack of options. Agreeing with Hendris, um, it, if your dialogue is going on the page extremely diagonally, you're doing it wrong because you need to give your um, characters, your player, an option to say more than one thing. So it can't just be NPC says one thing. You know, character says one thing, NPC says one thing, character plays one thing, because that's a story, that's not a game. Um, so choices are what makes an RPG fun. Um, make sure you give your player enough choices and that they're meaningful enough that um, that there's actually a reason to do more than click. I had a question. Um, when you guys are writing quests or NPCs, I mean, in your process, where do you usually start? Does it usually begin with, like, as for quests, like, do you begin with sort of a gameplay mechanic in mind, or do you, is it something else? 
for me, that actually de just depends on the project as a whole. So with Amora, um, we tend to go with, oh, hey, what's a cool nifty thing that maybe mm -hmm. wasn't scoped, but was never elaborated upon? Um, that's why I you know, have a, a, a broad, like, you know, topics, so to speak. Um, but with like NPCs and everything, it's really just, hey, I've got, you know, I've got an idea for like a really fun thing. That might be fun. That might be interesting. Um, I've created prompts for the Zoom class before. And while those were all very humorous in uh, nature, um, what I also just found uh, good is that just a very short prompt, like, I don't know, an eight words perhaps, maybe eight, nine words of just a very short prompt uh, okay. just to kind of get the noggin jogging and to give you a starting point, so to speak. Mm. I think I have like a mixed method. I mean, I have so many different ways to do this, really. Um, like, for example, right now I am trying to write a quest for Roscrea. And I really should um, pick up the work again. <laughs> and uh, basically, the main point of the quest is that... Okay, I'm not going to spoil, but okay, let's say that the player will get access to some items. So the quest is supposed to be, like, maybe a little bit more challenging. Um, and this was, like, my starting point. But uh, it was quite easy to just take it and start spinning some story from it. If you're looking for a way to sort of... Um like inspire yourself for quests or NPCs. NPCs are really easy. Think about someone in your life and if they were a Khajiit or if they were a, a Dunmar and be like, wow, my aunt would be a very odd Dunmar, you know, and start going from there um, so that you have something real life to base it on. Because a lot of the NPCs that I see do not react in a way that any living creature would do. Um, and if you're basing it on what a real person you know or a character in a movie might be, um, I mean, like, what would the Godfather look like if he was an Altmer? Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do without trying to be, uh, you know, big, capitalized, original, um, especially when you're a student, because people are people and they run with certain patterns. And so um, looking around for real life examples helps with NPCs a lot. With quests, if you're really stuck, play some Skyrim and then ask yourself at the end of a quest, what else could have happened here? Mm. That's a really good point. Write what you know. And if you don't know yet, learn about it. That's the fun thing about writing. Uh, you, can just, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you can just take a book and read and learn new stuff and then, I don't know, utilize that. Yeah. And sometimes it also, it can be like a, a person, just as you said. But it can also be like something that some person said, some interesting sentence. And somehow it like sticks to you. And you maybe find ways to use it. And then, like, I mean, for me, it is like this sometimes that I find some interesting quote, some some cool. sentence, and then I basically just create an NPC around it. So, yeah, for, for me, inspiration really is everywhere. I, I would like to ask, um, say some of us are actually going to be, you know, uh, like, in, inspired enough that we will now go and actually write stuff. I, I, I hope many people here. Or I, I feel that way already. <laughs> but if, if we do that, um, where should we, should we just put the work into, um, into the channel here for, for like feedback? Or what should, we, what should we ultimately do with uh, a, a first result or, or first work? Well, um, have you seen, well, you know, we have different channels for the different disciplines and we have the writing channel uh, and there is, um, there are some pinned messages and among them we have some uh, student assignments. So we usually recommend uh, that you start with some of those. So maybe if you... Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry if this was too much of a like banal question. No, no, no. It's good to know. No, no. I think it was a, it was a good question. Um, All right. Thank you. So just, just uh, check out the writing channel and you will find more information there. I want to ask another question uh, for the teachers in the chat. 
how did you guys get into game writing and then into uh, the Beyond Skyrim community specific? I have no idea how I ended up as a writer, honestly. I joined the AU with the goal of becoming a better concept artist, since I've had a bit of history with, with game art, with concept art and everything, and just 2D art. And but no, I just started writing, and I was told, yes, writing was good, keep doing it. And I kept doing it. And then we've had the student collaboration known as How to Be an Emperor, where the writing lead at the time had like a big list with possible NPC slots and everything. And it's like, okay, yeah, um, do as much as you can. Those that won't be done by X amount of time are going to be cut. And then I took that personally, and I wrote like 30-ish NPCs for the mod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, um, I got into it because I played Bruma, and I thought this would be very cool, and I didn't know what to do, and I had no um, like skill at the creation kit. Um, so I decided writing was literally the only thing I could do besides voice acting, and voice acting requires you to have like a microphone and a place quiet. I don't have either of those things. Um, so I got into writing, had some really great mentors um, with the teachers at the time, most of whom are still working on Beyond Skyrim projects. And um, and they were just lovely and I learned so much. And then I sort of fell into writing in the various Beyond Skyrim projects by applying to a couple of them and then gradually worked my way up into leading a um, couple projects and it's been, um, it's been an amazing uh, experience, but yeah, it, it really is. You really can just work your way up the ladder, keep keep chugging at it, do your best, and and people will take notice because, like, Hendris is um, lead writer on At Mora, um, and I, I do Valenwood, hence my name, and um, there are a lot of other lead writers from Beyond Skyrim and other projects, um, and not just writers, but all the other disciplines as well. And we watch and we see, oh, this guy has potential or, you know, this girl really knows her stuff. And we um, we take note. And then when you apply, we say, yeah, we know exactly how to use you. So um, you get a lot of experience fast if you're willing to just put in the time. Yeah, and I'm trying to think. What was the reason why I joined? I think I wanted to gain like more experience in game development and writing was like my way in. I mean, I'm doing other things as well. I'm doing level design uh, and implementation. And um, well, apart from that, I'm also learning some programming <laughs> uh, and Unity. So I'm just sort of doing everything, but writing was like the first thing that I started with. Ooh, found the, the Hesos Nest Twitter board with the prompts. Um, so if you, if you want to like, um, have a prompt for an NPC or if, if you want to come up with one, um, it's really just the first thing that comes to mind. Just write it down. Um, since I, mean, I feel like starting with a blank sheet of paper is incredibly difficult, both with writing and with concept art. So as soon as you put something on that sheet, it becomes easier. Um, so as an example, a couple of the prompts for Hester's Nest, uh, which again was a very humorous um, mod project. We've, we've got things like, oh yeah, a female Argonian thief who's extremely disappointed by the lack of sea in the mountains. Um, we've got a, a female red guard who, uh, sorry, a female Breton, um, who's a witch who's trying to become a hack raven by watching the birds, uh, although she would like to have an owl aesthetic instead of a raven. Uh, we've got a male Altima. He's a claustrophobic guy whose job it is to delve into tight dungeons and mines. Uh, so it can be like fairly weird nonsense. I think we've had a I think I, I saw a Khajiit who's got like a cat hair allergy in there somewhere, or like a, a werewolf with a dog allergy or dog hair allergy. Um, it can be utter nonsense as long as you just start with something. And if you um, aren't actually in a project, it doesn't need to fit any projects um, 
aesthetic. So you're you're not writing for more wind or for IB yet. So do what you want while you're learning. You're learning at um, at the AU, uh, and so you can basically let your creativity run pretty rampant. Um, it's only once you join a project that you'll have specific prompts from the project and they won't necessarily like it if suddenly something becomes a dramora that wasn't a dramora in the first place and you know that sort of thing but uh, while you're writing in the au just you know let yourself go hog wild we have seen it all as teachers too so we will not be <laughs> weirded out by anything that you do at this point yeah yeah but also like speaking about prompts i think henrus uh, has a lecture where you like talk about prompts and give some advice how to come up with um... I think you did that yeah yeah I think it's from the uh from our student project oh. the lecture that you held in uh, I don't know November maybe that's definitely possible because I yeah yeah I... So in any case, it's it's worth to uh, to check out um, the videos um, on the um, on the AU YouTube channel. Ah, <laughs> uh, find it. Yeah, link it on the chat. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, that yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. So does anyone else have any questions? I have a small question. Yes. Um, how <laughs> how often do you get uh, hit over the head by the other teams? Like when you write something that you believe is very interesting, but they say something like, uh, "No, we 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 can't implement that. It's going to be hell on earth to code or something like that." Does that ever happen? For a quest, for example. Um, usually, whenever you write something, you've got a prompt that you or a a summary that you're going to give to your lead first. Um, or you're already working with a summary somewhere. Um, and typically, you are always more than welcome to just like ping an implementer or just ping the implementation rule saying like, hey, I've got this plan with this work. So you would ask first and then write so that you don't have to uh, redo everything or completely, you know, uh, just that, that you don't have to uh, scrap your plans and you can plan accordingly beforehand. So oh, yeah. it's more of an exchange with the other teams. Writing is more of an exchange with other teams to know if what you're doing is feasible, by, uh, by, uh, basically, and yeah. going uh, further and further into details on what you want to do, right? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. We encourage people chatting with other departments to see, hey, is this possible? Hey, I would do this and that. How much of a pain would that be? Um, and I would also just encourage people to make use of the Creation Kit Wiki. Um, so you can just have a look at what's possible yourself. Um, let me actually find a link for that. Um, because it's got a very handy list of things that you can check for, for example. Uh, so things that you... Um, because basically the way it works is that, for example, um, when you're working with an NPC and you want an NPC to comment on something, you would work with a condition. And is the list of all the possible conditions, which is super helpful. So you can be like, oh yeah, um, the NPC can say something special or can react to something um, if, I don't know, if they're a ghost or if they're next to like um, a male or a female player, um, if they witness a vampire feeding, if it's snowing outside, you can check for the weather. Um, you can check for, I don't know, quests being completed, not started yet. Um, you can check um, how much gold they've got in, in, in the inventory. Mm -hmm. I think that's how Brynjolf deals with that whole, oh yeah, you haven't had much coin or something like that. Um, there's a lot that you can work with um, just with the CK. So I know the CK looks very intimidating on first glance, but once you kind of have you look around, once you've you know, clicked a couple of things here and there, um, you tend to remember what's where and what's possible. And then again, there's always a wiki for you to just uh, check up on things. Yeah. And I'm, 
again, I I sound like I'm repeating myself, but Henry, didn't you have like a lecture where you were like showing no, the way she kit? That was Thales. Okay. Well, Thales anyways, I, one game. of the teachers yeah. had a lecture. Um. So <laughs> this is another one that you can like check out if you if yeah. you have time. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty I, sure that it was Hendrus because I, I was watching a, it. <laughs> it wasn't a proper lecture. It was more just a, hey, I'm going to show you how to implement an NPC from a oh, perspective. Okay. okay, yeah. Or you were basically writer's first course with the CK. Yeah. And also, just to give like a more general answer, I mean, if you, let's say you write something that it doesn't really work for the implementation. Um, if you do it in a student assignment, I think... At least when I am reading it and giving feedback, um, I will point it out so that you you know you know that something might not work. And I think it's the same way in Beyond Skyrim that should it happen that you have some idea and it doesn't work, it's okay. Like don't worry. As long as you talk to other people, discuss with them, you know it's fine. So it's nothing to worry about. If you if you keep chatting with like um, some sort of implementers or level designers, um, in many cases you also get like really cool ideas about oh I didn't know that's possible or oh I didn't know we've had that dungeon all, um, all the time so mm, let let's use it. Um, when you're part of a project, it does depend on the project, but some also give access to the builds to the writers. Alternatively, you can ask like a level designer or an implementer if. Um, they'll accompany you for like a tour around the map. Um, check out the things in game if you want to. If, if you're already writing for a project, if not, uh, that's fine because in the AU we don't really have any like builds to pass up and then pass around. But yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so. What else? <laughs> I think everyone is busy writing their first assignment. 